Still waiting. We can get started without her if you want, or if, we, if you want to wait a few more minutes or whatever. I'm good with waiting a couple more minutes. I need to go get a glass of water. Okay. We didn't rest until the end of last time, did we, Nick? You didn't. You didn't rest. Is that what you said? Yeah. yeah. Right. No, you guys finished uh, um, <clears throat> with that demon, and from there you kind of just took off. That's where we left off. Just saying to start, the sound on this is way better. Okay, good. I imagine it does help for you because you're not having, it's not trying to uh, pick up a video as well. Not yet. Yeah. <clears throat> and it's not trying to use old technology. It's kind of annoying. Apparently, my uh, forward button, my uh, forward button on my mouse, which I use for push to talk, on Reddit is now uh, actually going to the next page. It hasn't done that before. Damn, boy, you just keep having issues, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's not really a big issue. It's just me, you know. It sounds like a big issue to me, man. I'd rather that than uh, having issues uh, actually talk, being heard. I went up to check on Lindsay a little bit ago, and uh, she was like, all right, love you. Get down. Go. Bye. And I, I come into the room. She, can, she she's in there practicing her ukulele, getting pissed because <laughs> she can't get all the chords down. <laughs> it's, uh, it's great though. It's dangerous, dude. No, uh, but she does really good. It's awesome. Like she does a really good job. No word from Han yet. I got nothing. I hate to say this, but we might should get started. All right. Yeah, that's fine. Is everybody else okay? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okie dokie. All right. So uh, kind of just did a fairly quick recap, but I'll go into a little bit more detail. Um, so last time we were still in Vulcan Valve. Um, you still had a whole bunch bunch of flying demons um, all over in the chasm there. Um, for the most part, the drow were preoccupied with attacking them, uh, but some of them did end up noticing you guys, and you fought them off as best as you could in the area. <clears throat> we're able to locate your most of your supplies, 
um, and were able to somewhat equip the NPCs. Um, I think some of you don't have maybe some backpacks or bags or rations and things like that, and I don't think any of the NPCs do. Um, so that might be some hindrance in the future. Um, let's see. Uh, as you were kind of doing a little bit more searching as you were putting your gear on and equipping the others, <clears throat> Ted Nug opened up the door and saw um, the priestess on the bridge along with Jorlin and Shur and promptly shut it, but not before they spotted you guys. Um, so you took the hint from uh, Sarath to get down as quickly as possible into the pool below so that you could make a hasty retreat. <clears throat> you jumped down, got caught in the spider webs, which you expected to happen, kind of burned away through with fire bolts and um, scorching rays and, and the like, and were, or sacred flame, flame rather, and, uh, and several of you, or yeah, a couple of you flew um, and got some of the smaller ones down. <clears throat> and floated and whatnot. Um, and as you got to the pool, those that had swum or swam out um, saw a big slime reach out after you. Didn't actually hit you. It was trying to, um, but you heard it say um, flesh for the faceless one, or food for the faceless one. It looks like she's, she's coming up. Yeah, Han just messaged me. <laughs> okay. Like, shit, just look her up, she's scuttling called up. It. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there we go, they called it. Um, so uh, as you guys were kind of running away from the, from the slime in the pool, you started making your way to the closest um, look to be a path or exit out of that chasm. And as you were going, one of the, uh, I think it was a rock, fell in front of you guys um, and immediately started attacking you guys. Uh, when it did, it poofed itself up and poisoned uh, Sal and Topsy, thank you, or the girl, or the boy. Um, yeah, Turvy. They look the same. Yes, they do. <laughs> Very similar. Wow, um, that is insensitive. <laughs> just Topsy has longer hair, that's all. Uh, Wait, they have hair? Yep. Topsy does. Turvy's got a little tuft. Uh, let's see. Uh, you were able to t defeat the Vrock, um, and that's basically where we left off. Anybody have any questions? Nope, not yet. Okay, so I'll wait till Diane gets in since she's coming on. So there she is. Sorry. That's okay. I just did a recap. Do you need uh, any type of recap? No, I don't want to. Well, if you have any questions, now's the time. So. Um. No, I think I think I'm pretty good on. Okay, so we're picking up where you guys left off at the very end um, after defeating the Vrock and you're heading down the pathway that you was being blocked off at that time. <clears throat> okay. Alright, so is there anything you guys wanted to do? Uh, actually, I, what I should ask first is what is your marching order as you guys are heading out? out. Okay. So, move up front. All right. Um, All right. Uh, I'm not going to be up front somewhere. Okay. So, the light spell only lasts an hour. So, Sal's going to have a hard time seeing unless you're constantly casting light every hour. I think he's the only one that doesn't have... I think he's have. the only one that doesn't have... Uh, it's a cantrip. I can cast it as many times as you want. Okay. Yeah, we may want to just go ahead and do that. Some people may want to stay out of the light, but uh, even so, having the light is useful. I found out recently. Yeah. 
because we still have disadvantage on any perception checks. Yep. If it's dim light. Or if it's dark. Correct. Which I've tried to explain, but. Yeah, I've been reading a lot of the uh, D and D forums. Came across that. Yep. All right. So Tidnug, Sal, Melvin, Eldith will be up there as well. Who's after that? I guess I will. I'll be somewhere in the middle or, or the back. It doesn't matter. Right. Spoke to, spoke to me in the back. He's going to be checking his notes. Okay. And books. All right. Let's see. Um, where do you want your NPCs at? I think Seraph would be somewhere right behind the front since uh, he seems like he want to tell people where to go. All right. I'm going to put... Uh, she sure I'll be somewhere towards the front as well, just since I'm assuming we want to go to Slubledop. Yeah, I'll put Sarath right at Sarath and um, Shushar right after Ted Nug. Jim Jar would probably be near uh, so, my dude. Okay. Topsy and Turvy will probably be by Diane, I'm assuming. Sounds good. Uh, Stool always tags along with Sarith, so he doesn't take up much room. Um... Okay. All right. So, is there anything you guys want to do immediately after you've killed the rock as you're kind of heading off? With the light, we heading towards an outside, or that we can tell yet? Um, you see no light other than what you have in your hand, or in your talon, I should say. Um, your, your end goal really is to get you, get outside but it, from what you have heard and what you can tell outside is a long ways away um, Shushar has told you that the best way in his mind is to go to Slubladop which is on the um, shores of the Dark Lake the closest shores um, and from there you should be able to kind of maneuver around Dark Lake which is kind of a uh, misnomer. It's not truly a lake. It's more of a whole bunch of interweaving uh, waterways um, that's extremely hard to navigate unless you have somebody that knows what has either done it before or um, knows the area very well. So keep that in mind. Um, Do you guys want? Are you wanting to run or walk or well, check things out? Or as we get so far, I think it'd so be. Uh, far, I think I'd suggest be, uh, to uh, take a short nap, uh, short break. I uh, need to. Uh, I need to. <laughs> still hurt Melvin, from the source. You're pushing your Let's pushing make... talk and <laughs> hearing everything. Sorry. Let's uh, let's be careful going through here because there's probably traps to get out of here. You don't want to just run through something. You might end up in a hole. I mean, since Sarath got us this far, does Sarath have any suggestions for getting us farther? Uh... Um, I'll just go ahead and an answer, okay. but if you want to kind of elaborate in any role-playing way, you can. Um, as far as he knows, is there's no immediate dangers uh, other than the dangers that are inherent in the Underdark itself. My vote is that we take a break and take a short rest if, or a long rest if possible. Yeah, I'm down with that. Immediately? 
Well, I mean, but I would say let's travel down out of the way for a little while, uh, just to get like immediately away okay. from um, the whole mess going on back where we came from. Okay. Um, <clears throat> that makes the most sense. I will tell you, travel in the Underdark, even for beings that have lived down here their entire life, is difficult. Um, as uh, above ground, you can probably move 15 to 20 miles a day. In the Underdark, it's normal between four and eight miles a day. Hmm, okay. uh, and that has to do with the changing uh, terrain. Um, some of it's loose. Some of it has to do with uh, in the dangers that just lurk around. I mean, some, some things can just pop right out of the wall, such as worms, things like that. Um, so keep that in mind, and, and you let me know if you want to move at a faster or a normal or a slow pace. And that it, there are advantages and disadvantages to each, but just keep think, keep that in mind. The drought probably going to be occupied for a while, so. One at a time. So I would say normal or slow. Okay. Melvin, what were you saying? I was recommending a slow pace. Okay. <clears throat> so at a slow pace, you can move about four miles a day. All right. So with a slow pace, you are able to improve your chances of foraging, which, if you've noticed, um, the rations that you may have in your bags are, some of you have slightly less. Um, the ones that are there, you can see they're starting to go bad. Keep that in mind. I can create water and food if we need to. Okay. Um, it, and it can create plenty for everybody. Okay. And that's including for the uh, um, NPCs as well? I'll look at that real quick. I you got it right here. There. I can create you have it there. 30 gallons of water. 45 pounds of food. Okay. Dang. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. Wow, both. So, you guys start heading off, um, and you've, you've made it about two miles, and as you're going, you, you things... As you're heading into the Underdark, not that you weren't already, but not in a civil, quote unquote, civilized area, um, you can tell that the the environment's quite different. Um, it, it is dark, whereas in the um, the Drow area there were some lights. Um, this is pitch black, and for those of you that have dark vision, it's not so bad. But it, everywhere you look, it's Outside of your 60-foot range or so, it's pitch black. Uh, um, and it, that can take a toll on a person after so long. Um, it's quite cool um, and very humid. There's not much airflow. Um, it smells like dank earth uh, in a lot of the areas. Um, you do occasionally see some small... Uh, mushrooms and things like that. So there are some that are bioluminescent um, as you're walking along the trails. Um, and some of these trails look to be carved by something, um, but some of them also seem to be natural formed, and whereas some of them are maybe as wide as Ted Nug is turned sideways, Others are gigantic expanses, like a forest, uh, that you can't see from one side to the other at all. Um, the ranges of height go from about six feet to you can't see the ceiling. Um, Anybody have any questions about anything else that you might have noticed or seen as you're traveling? I just ask if we think we're far enough to take a break yet. 
Um, it, at about the two mile mark, you about, you guys can probably take a break. Um, did anybody want to forage or anything like that, or did you want to um, burn a? If wherever we're ta- taking a break, if it's like a little alcove or anything, can anyone forage, or do we have to have like a? Um, anybody can forage, but those that have specialty in survival or have lived in the Underdark have a better chance of finding edible mushrooms and things like that. Oh, excellent. Wow, I would like to forage as I go. Okay. Uh, Shushar probably know how to... I mean, he's basically lived alone in the Underdark for quite a while, right? Right. So he probably would be pretty good at finding food. Yeah, ClickClack's going to go off and forage and look for some mushrooms. I suppose uh, Shushar will go with ClickClack and help guide him. Okay. I've been and, looking for uh, and, spell components and bat crap and stuff like that. I think you should you should have gotten your components back. I think, right? Yes, you would have. And your bat crap, I think, I don't think it's expended, so you still have whatever you had before. I think. Okay. Um. And click clack. I assume is using his his third eye for seeing. Yeah, I, I linked that. I activated it. Um, okay. I don't. Um, okay. All right. So, All right, so Luna's, making Luna's making a good berry. Did we take a rest? You can. Um, let me check. Yes, you can take a rest. A short rest. Do you guys want me to create? Food and water, or I mean, is that gonna? Are we in it, deep? Do we have to? Does that cost a spell to do that or anything? It's a level three spell. It's a level three spell. Oh wow! Yeah. I mean, if you don't think we need it, I can do it later. Um, let me see if I can manage to get enough to forge. Do I need to roll anything for that, Nick? Yeah, roll a survival check. Can do it with the uh, advantage because it's Shushar. Um, yeah, if Shushar is helping, you can. Yeah, I had planned on just going out with like the group to forge stuff. Okay. Okay. I just figured we've been in this place for like a couple weeks, and they've been feeding us garbage. It might yep. be a good idea just to get started off that way, and make enough so that we all had one good meal to get going. Well, if you want a good meal, you got to go with the good berries, man. Great food is bland. <laughs> True, but it's also need water and uh, you know, how many good berries can you make? Yeah, she makes 10 for casting. And that's uh, basically a, a single good berry. It's good to feed you for a whole day, basically. 420 in the other day. <laughs> All right, so. All right, so. Okay, that's fine. Ted Nug and uh, Shushar and, and a few of the others are able to go out and do find some some um, edible fungi. Um, let's see here. Uh, and is actually able to find uh, some small, it's not really a waterfall, it's more of a small dripping stream um, off in, a, in an alcove area. Uh, and I think Smoke asked if there was an alcove. Yes, there's a, there's a few small ones off to the side and, and um, some there's, uh, what do you call them, stalagmites mites all over the place as well. So if you want to just place to prop yourself up or whatever. Yeah, well, I was just going to go somewhere to hide. So it, like, I can do a uh, silent image, like, in case we hear something coming. Gotcha. Okay. Um, okay. okay. Um, Did you say something to me? Yeah, so we can only take a short rest. Short rest. Right now, yes. Dang it. Okay. Um, so you guys are able to to find some fungi called barrel stalks, um, and these usually grow near water, um, some some sorts of water. And like I said, that you did find a small little tiny stream. Um, 
and it apparently was enough to at least sustain these. Uh, these fungi are called barrel stalks, and they can contain, let's see, the ones you found. Contain five gallons of water and Shushar is able to tell you that um, along with the water you are able to eat them um, and it will provide these ones in particular will provide you with uh, six pounds of food um, and you were able to collect uh, about ten of these So, you can make, it's equal to about 60 pounds of food, which is enough to sustain you guys for at least a couple days, probably. Nice. Nice. All right. Um, is there anything else you guys wanted to do in this short break? Can you check direct really quick? Yeah, I'm, I'm looking. And then, uh... I know I get my key back in a short rest, but uh, spores, this poison I have, I forget, is a longer short rest, you said? Um, we'll say it's short rest, both of you, both you and the, uh, um, sp sperm meth, uh, why can I, I can read it, the dark gnome kid. Yeah. He, uh, <laughs> he, uh, is able to kind of push it off as well. Right. Is there anything else you guys wanted to do? Yeah, during the short rest, I was going to go ahead and talk to people. Okay. So, uh, let's see. Hold on, let me fix something. Let's see. So, amigos, what is it exactly that happened back there? It, uh, it went very fast for me. Uh, how you say I was uh, late to the fiesta? And I'm going to point at... Melvin, and call him Padre de Zo. Um, que paso? Uh, what, what brought y'all there? I, I didn't really get to know you people. Uh, I want to know more about you. And he's talking about Melvin here. <laughs> <laughs> Melvin kind of looks at him like those head cocks. Well, we kind of got drunk and dragged down here. We got double crossed. <clears throat> double crossed, eh? Double crossed, eh? Yeah, me, Ted Nog, and Diane. And smoke. smoke. <laughs> oh, yeah. And the cat. <laughs> Which cat? There's another cat out there now. He points at smoke. <laughs> <laughs> Si, el gatito, okay. Uh, hmm, so, what what would make you so valuable to these uh, people to bring you here? Uh, we kind of kicked the ass of uh, somebody they knew, I think, and uh, their revenge. Hmm. <clears throat> uh, so we, we can get to know each other better. What, uh... What do you bring to the table? What are you uh, great at there, Padre? Hitting things and fire. <laughs> I'm pretty good at healing things, too. Okay, okay. And I'm going to go ahead and point at someone else. He's going to point at Smoke. El Gatito! Uh, que paso? Uh, what do you bring to the table? Smoke looks up from his book and says... Uh, actually, hold on. Uh, he's gonna do like a little minor illusion. Uh, crap, I don't know what of though. Uh, a middle finger. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> Might as well. It's like I really do not like the loud bird. So I'll do a minor illusion of a middle finger, or a mage hand middle finger, one or the other. Anger issues. I see. No problem. <laughs> <clears throat> Uh, 
Um, he's going to keep going through the group of the ones that he knew, so he'll point at Ted Nug. He didn't know enough about him to give him a nickname yet, but uh, Senior Ted Nug, uh, what about you? Um, I hit stuff. You hit stuff. I like that. And he, I haven't came up with one for Diane yet because I haven't seen her do much yet either. But, uh, short stack. Uh, que pasó? <laughs> I'm not short. That's really rude. Hey, sorry. Yeah. I'm very blunt. I uh, speak my mind. I'm from uh, The Ring. It's all a big show. I'm sorry. I'm going to pick Diane up and, like, lift her on my shoulders real quick. Does she ring him at the arena? She's the tallest person in here now. It's all excited, and she like flexes her arms a little bit. Um, I'm a performer. Ah, me too. How so? Um, I can play a lot of different instruments, and sometimes, if you're really lucky, which I'm really lucky, then I can in battle do some sleight of hand. Ah, tricky one, eh? A little bit. Uh, he's also he's gonna pat his side because uh, if he got it back, he has an accordion. I I um tamper with the uh the music in my zombie a little bit. Cool. Oh jeez. <laughs> <laughs> So he goes and plays. <laughs> Not too bad, eh? <laughs> no, that's... Smoke is going to be really looking really annoyed and try to shush him, saying it's like you're making too much noise. Uh, fine. Go ahead and stop it. <clears throat> but uh, he still wants to know more people. So uh, let's go outside of the group. <clears throat> and points at uh, Click Clack. Uh, El Cuervo. Uh, Mr. Crow. Uh, que pasó? You, you speak very, uh, randomly. So you hear a voice in your head and it says, Yeah, 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 keep that to yourself. And then audibly you hear, Oh yeah, brother, I'm so sorry, I can't help it, man! Ay, <laughs> <laughs> no problem. And one more. Uh, he's gonna point at Luna. Corre la espesa! Uh, por favor, uh, share with everyone, uh, if you, uh, will. Well, what brings you here? We, uh, we just barely met you. I'm just gonna shrug. That's all. Both the cats are very, uh, antisocial. <laughs> They're very catty. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to keep to yourself, I'll, I'll let you edit. And it's kind of not. And I'm not going to bother with NPCs. We'll let that go ahead and be. We uh, don't want to drag it out too long. But, uh, yes, I, uh, me, myself, I uh, used to be a man of the ring. I uh, put on performances in the uh, arena, you know, and big show. We'd fight each other, make some money. It was nice. Uh, but um, I just uh, kind of... Made some uh, bad enemies, apparently, because that's why I guess I got here. El Eldith kind of jumps up and says, You ever fought any dwarves? Uh, no, the, the, um, uh, give me a second on that one. Go ahead and do something else with me to make sure, because I want to do this right. Because there's a certain term I want to use. Okay. She says, uh, um, the hairkin is, uh, is a hardy folk and she's always up for a, a good tussle. You guys all hear it in your head. <laughs> tussle, right? <laughs> <laughs> Giggity. I can't find it. Um, uh, 
Yeah, I can't find it. Uh, no, ma'am. Uh, the uh, La Paquita. They uh, they participate in their own fights. I uh, I don't take part of the uh, the minis. Ugh. The the minis. I don't worry. It's just part of the ring. It just makes it look like a better show. Tell me, why why do you wear the mask? Uh, because there is no choice. Everyone always has a choice. I most people do, but I literally have no choice. I uh, I bringing up some uh, painful memories here. I um I was part of a. Uh, a monastery once, that's why I'm a, a monk. But, um... I was a lot different than you know me as now. I... Let's just make it short. I made an enemy, he put it on me, and I cannot take it off anymore. Did you at least cut him down to size? Uh, that's not very, uh, monastery-like. I, um... I was excommunicated from there. So I make direct eye contact um, with him, and I, I ask him, would you be willing to try something? I, you need to expand more for me to know what you're talking. Just say yes or no. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Uh, yes? I cast Mind Meld on him to try to remember the moment he got the mask on. Okay. Mm. Click, clack, Mind Meld. So, what do I need to do? Uh, it's up to you. If you are accepting of it, then he is able to find that one memory and seize it vividly. Okay, so you may just whisper it to you then? You can. All right, I just got to find the copy and paste for it then. Or if you want to direct message it to him, you can. Yeah, yeah, no, that's what I'm going to do. I'm just okay. trying to find yeah. it. Gotcha. Yeah, you can move on. We're good. I'm in his brain doing things. Just wiggling around in there. Giggity. Uh, so just sitting there, uh, write down in my book, my journal. Okay. Shushar, I suppose, will just be kind of looking in the direction that we need to be going next. Jim Jar breaks the entire silence. He's like, "I bet the, I bet the, um, the dwarf could take the uh, the bird guy. Yeah, I got my bets on that." <laughs> and for the first time, you actually see Eldith crack a smile. Yeah, she's hardy. She's hardy. Uh, yeah, she could jump around and do stuff. It would be painful. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, I, 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 um, I only perform with the the men. I don't know if I uh, can. Uh, it'd be right for me to uh, do this. What's the matter? You afraid of a tough woman? <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> she she, she kind of elbows you in the knee and looks up and gives you a grin and says I don't think you were <laughs> just throwing it out there uh, if you really want to but do, do you really think this is the place for that right now no <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to see it brother yeah you How about we make a, a bet who will right? win? Yeah, it's just a short rest. Uh, Eldith probably, says... Probably. Yeah, she says that uh, you're right. Probably now is not the right time. Uh, okay. Yeah, I probably need to start getting move, get moving. Yep. And if you guys want to. I mean, you could role play for an hour if you want. I don't care. No, let's... <laughs> well, I figure role play wise, I should probably get moving. But, yeah. It's whatever you guys want to do. Yeah, let's get out of here. I don't want to have scary spiders and shit come after me. Yeah, I know. Look at the pictures, right? <laughs> let's get moving. Okay. 
All right, so the, the group kept, packs up after finally eating something other than flavorless uh, mushroom water. Um, yeah, it's got a little earthy tone to it. Yeah, it, it's, it's... The mushrooms you found still aren't that great. Um, you notice that um, Luna didn't actually partake of any of the food that you got and seemingly only ate one berry and seems fine. Um, but you guys continue on, um, sweating as, like I said, there's no wind or anything like that, uh, continuing at a slow pace. Um, you go for a few more hours, and, um, let's see, I need smoke and click clack. And Diane to roll perception for me. You don't. Uh, disadvantage or regular? Uh, yeah, you're right. Disadvantage. Sorry. Oh shit. Well, ignore that. Well, uh, I just rolled you again. Just, you can just roll again. Okay. Oh, so I don't have to click it as disadvantage if I. No, roll? no, just roll again. We just we'll just use the low. Okay. All, all, it, all it is is a shortcut, basically. Yep. Alrighty. Um, so as you guys continue to walk, um, all of a sudden, you hear a thud. And Click Clack, Jim Jar, Topsy Turvy, Diane turn around. And they see that smoke has fallen behind them behind you guys and he seems to have an arrow sticking out of the back of his leg ah. and before he can really get out a before he it just hits him with shock another one pierces him through the side and you start seeing several others coming towards the group Run, run. Mm. run? <laughs> Do we pick up our little buddy? And I guess I wouldn't have seen this. Y you can, yeah, you wouldn't have seen. Uh, you might have heard from everybody kind of, I'm assuming you guys would probably gasp or turn around or something. Yeah, how much time do we have? Do we have enough time to like let out a statement or just uh, gasp? You're seeing a whole bunch of arrows kind of just whizzing down the corridor past you guys. Um, they seem to be black feathered arrows. Mm. Um, and you see that Smoke is struggling. He's... It seems to be there's um, something constricting his muscles. Alright, well if I'm allowed to, I'm going to let out we're under attack. Okay. Um, well, at that time... Stool actually poofs a cloud of spores, so you can all talk freely. Dope. Everything good back there? Cast mine meld again. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what it feels like? like? How close am I to smoke? Uh, oh, quite a ways away. Probably 20 feet. 20, 30 feet. I'll try to work oh, my way to Oh, I'm sorry. Oh. oh my god, I forgot to push the talk. I'm an idiot. I'm <laughs> such an idiot. <laughs> I'll say, don't worry, I'm struggling to pull a, something from my belt, and I pull out the uh, ever-smoking bottle and pull it open. And uh, so, As he does this, you start seeing uh, the during your short break, uh, Melvin cast the stone that Sal had been holding with light again and you start seeing the whole corridor filling with smoke. Like a really rich bonfire smoke. Does it, like, is it make us breathe weird or is it just visual? It, it, spray, it spreads across everywhere. It's very thick. 
Um, about I think it's about fifty. It ends up coming to be 60 about sixty foot fit, radius. Okay, so sixty foot high and start spreading around the corridor, up towards you guys and f- behind him as well. So hey, you'll just hear after the uh, with the telepathy from uh, stool. This is like just I'll say you just hear me say run. Click like starts to run. Stool, you I'm see trying to get the stool. Smoke. What's that? I'm trying to get the smoke to cast lesser restoration on him because I think he's getting hit by uh, those arrows from the drow that are drugging him. Okay. Um, the farther you push your way through, the harder everybody else is running against you. Um, and the more arrows are coming your way. Uh, Sarah will say, "Leave now." Serpentine motions. <laughs> ten, ten <laughs> Serpentine babu. And um, how uh, how far back were the the kids from Sal? Um, about ten feet. If I can, I'm still gonna go grab him. He just feels a sense of obligation to protect him. Okay. I'm gonna run as fast as little feet can carry. Okay. Now you get the rest of you guys running. Yeah. yeah. I might actually go pick up. Uh, help pick up with some of the shorter people. Okay. Which ones? Hmm. So, uh, so how many of like uh, the you've got people that we have? I know like, Topsy Turvy, that. Jim Jar, L Death, um, Bupito's kind of short, and Stool is dinky. Hmm, okay, um, I'm gonna pick up my buddy first off, and then pick up Stool. Okay. Are you okay, Smoke? You can't see anything. Yeah, you don't hey, see you him don't, anymore. You don't, you don't hear anything from him. It, yeah, but... It, I mean, don't, I, we got hit by those spores, right? You should be able to talk to me. You would think. You don't hear anything. He did. Crap. He did. Kind of dramatic. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, if we're running, we're leaving him behind, right? Yeah. All yeah. right. All you can do, just keep running. Okay. So you guys are continuing on um, as you start to to head off, uh, running as fast as you can. Again, keep in mind that. It is a very difficult, rocky terrain, um, stumbling along the way. But with his, what seems to be his last efforts, he tried to make your escape as uh, easy as possible by filling the whole cavern with thick, dark smoke. Yeah, so, it goes up to 120 feet. It goes 10 feet out every minute. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, yeah, okay. so it goes up to 120 foot radius. Yeah, so... As you look behind you, all you see is smoke and then darkness. But not smoke. (laughs) Right. I get what you did there. (laughs) Um, You guys continue on. You you do hear some shouting in the in the uh, um, in the distance. Um, let's see here.
I'm doing some behind the scenes stuff. Okay. So Sale may want to check his Yeah, I, I see. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I'm just I, I could use it as a more of a reaction, but I don't think he would be willing to uh share that information if he seems more of a Okay worrying about himself kind of guy. Sure. All right. So you guys continue on um, until you can no longer you're, you're breathing as heavy as you can and you're about to give out. Um, need everybody to give me a constitution saving, uh, just a constitution check. Nice roll. All right. Um, so, Sal, um, from carrying the kids and trying to fly and having to kind of tuck your wings in at several several areas and and things like that, you're you're getting extremely weak. Uh, so much so that you cannot continue on at this pace, um, and you start to fall behind. <sighs> Amigos, <sighs> hold up. I'm having a hard time here. I slowed What's wrong? I slow uh, just, I don't know. I just, uh, I don't know. I you I injured? No, I'm just winded. You've been running as fast as you can for probably mm, about an hour or so. How and obviously, is go, is is go ahead. All right, take it down a pace. Uh, what were you saying there? Uh, how like large is? is Sal. Yeah, Sal. I can't remember the height. I'm mean, looking. It's not recorded on there. Let me look at data sheet. Did I not put it on there? Sorry. It's okay. Uh, four foot ten. Huh. How dare you call me short and we're almost the same height. Rude. <laughs> Rude. I didn't check, okay? <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, well, never mind. I still can't lift you. So, whatever. Because we're about the same size. Wait, how tall is Diane? Well, she was close to and four foot something. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah, we'll just slow down. Um, the, ki the kids, you can see, are starting to rub their eyes and yawn. Um, they're looking extremely tired. You can't have been carrying them and holding them for this entire time. Um, you can tell that they're quite tired and and about have had it as well. Oh, it's nap time. Hey, um, quick question. Mm -hmm. Do I still have my leather harness for carrying my totem around? Yep. Is it about topsy turvy size? Uh, uh, you could probably fit one of them in there, but I'm not sure if they really would want to be put in there. <laughs> As it was made for a log and not a person. <laughs> Just checking for future. Uh, for okay. Case, like, uh, <laughs> someone gets incapacitated. Gotcha. It's like, like a little baby heart. <laughs> so let's swaddle them. A deep gnome papoose. <laughs> Alright, well, I'm down to the setup camp. How far have we traveled since just full on sprinting out of there? Um, after sprinting like that, you've you've made it about a. F well, I'll just say you've made it about four miles. There's really no way that you can tell how far you've gone. Right. Um, but you can tell from the weariness that you you feel. Um, at least, at least 24 hours has transpired. Okay. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm down to just set up camp. Okay. Um, everybody roll a survival check. <laughs> I 
Okay, that's enough. <laughs> Those are pretty high rolls. So, yeah, you do find a couple small outcropping areas. Um, <laughs> this rolls, sorry. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, so there are several small caves um, off to the sides of the path that you guys have been going on. And if you want to camp in there, they seem to be okay. Let's do it. Okay. Um, does anybody want to? How do you want to do your watches and all that? I'll uh, stay up first. Okay. We should probably do watches in pairs since we have so many people. Yes, I'll go with first as well. Okay. Melvin will take second. I put a recommendation, by the way, in Discord. <clears throat> Sarah will stay up with uh, Melvin. And Jim Jar and Click Clack will do a watch. Okay. Turby's sleeping all the way through the night. Okay. <clears throat> Sal can clean up whoever needs it. I guess Topsy will also sleep. It's, uh, she wouldn't want to not be near her brother. Alrighty. <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> yeah, dead men can't talk. Um, Is there Diana anything? Will... Go ahead. <laughs> Do a watch too. Okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> while you guys are setting up camp and all that, do, are you wanting to make a small fire or anything like that, or um, if you want to do some more role play, that's that's okay too talking about anything so nick i'm gonna i don't know how you're gonna play this out but i'm gonna do my psionic investigation i'm gonna look for like something that i can grab a hold of and see who's been down this path do you need right. to link that yes please i talked to diane and ted nug and dwarf see if they want to still learn it yes yes Although I would assume that since we were, um, after we finished the first campaign, we were together for months around town, right? About a, about two months, yep. So I know we didn't explicitly say that, yes, we were still learning Dwarf. Um, I, I figured you probably were. Um, you've come a lo long way since you had, so any checks you have will be with advantage. Okay. Um, you can probably pick up some rudimentary dwarven words and, and phrases and things as they're talking. Um, if you were to hear a dwarf talk, I mean. Okay, cool. Um, Eldith listens in as, as you guys are talking as well. Kind of smirking. Did she smirking. correct my grammar? Every time. <laughs> Every word. So would I just need to roll like an intelligence check? Yes. Yep. Rick. Mm, not good. Yep. The the phrases and uh, words that Melvin is teaching you right now are just they don't seem to be sticking. You're kind of extremely exhausted from from the day's travels and and everything that's been going on it's it's hard to really keep focus on on learning a language right now that's wrong thing ignore that ignore that where is it then um click and just click intelligence yeah oh yeah would advantage just Click it again. Pick the second or the highest one. 
Okay. Yeah. So if you're you're the same way, it's uh, it's been very taxing and things are just not sticking this today. Um, Eldith jumps in. Very slow, Dwarven. Says, if you want to learn Dwarven, you need to get to Gondolgrim. That's where she's from. Which yeah. actually happens to be where Kudamorki and Sister uh, Garel were heading to. <laughs> well, so I'm definitely interested once we get out of this dark hole. And in common, she says, oh, you understood me. Just barely. I think we lost Melvin. Yeah, he's not in uh, roll 20. Yeah, I see that. Dang. Yeah, he said they've got some bad storms up there, too, so... So what happened while I was gone? They were learning dwarf. Uh, yeah. yep. Melvin and Melvin was trying to teach Ted Nug and Diane Orvish, um, and Eldith kept jumping in. Okay. Correcting their grammar and pronunciation. <clears throat> they just verify this is a long rest. Correct. This is a long rest. Yes. So any of your spell points and whatnot, uh, you will be getting back. That's what I needed. Uh, and everybody would be healed all the way up as well, except for Smoke. He did. Mom, yeah, mom. He's he's healed. We, we haven't Come on, that. man. <laughs> you don't know. You didn't see him die. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> Wait, maybe he is the Smoke. <laughs> he's actually a gigantic <laughs> vampire who turned into a gigantic thing of mist <laughs> or maybe he just got some bad shrooms <laughs> maybe they're all no, bad no, shrooms no. you can imagine right. the whole thing <laughs> Everyone's... we all have all been tripping <laughs> we haven't traveled two extra miles we've actually went ten feet <laughs> no he's gone <laughs> the under shroom. All right. So, Nick, um, yes. Did I see anything from holding one of the pebbles or rocks or whatever? Oh, that's what I was reading. Uh, if you want to keep it, you know, whatever, you can just message it to me. Okay. You so you are. You just picked up a pebble to see if anything. I mean, anything that would look out of place that might have been picked up, preferably, but I'm imagining there's nothing weird, so probably a pebble or, like, a fire log or something. I don't know. Um, I mean, there's plenty of little rocks and pebbles and things around. Um, roll an investigation check if you want to look for something. That would be more, more likely to be held by somebody? For, possibly, yeah. Okay, so, yeah, it doesn't seem to be... You don't even see, like, disturbed dust or anything. Um, but you pick up a rock just to kind of focus on it, just to see if anything had been in the area uh, from what this rock has seen in the past 24 hours. And all you see is darkness. Dude, that's, that's deep. All right. Rocks don't have dark vision. The underneath. Trolled me, dude. <laughs> trolled me so hard. <laughs> well, now you know. No, uh, but... What did the rock hear, though, Nick? Huh? No, but didn't hear anything. It does not seem that anything has been this way in the past 24 hours or so. That's good to know. I'll share that with the party, because I'm a nice person. Okay. How are you and sharing it with the party, then, Mr. Voices? <laughs> Thank you for reminding me. 
Welcome to oh, the water. Oh yeah, brother. There's like nothing been in this cave, man. We're good. I just love the fact that he, he apparently found like sound recordings of Macho Man Randy Savage. <laughs> just a whole huge collection. So not that you asked, but my character only had access to a crazy barbarian sex maker, so that's all he's got. That's the only he can only mimic, so that's the only voice he knows from being in captivity. Barbarian baby maker, that's all he's got. Oh my god. <laughs> Was that his name? Was his name Baby Maker? <laughs> you can inquire. There? You can inquire. I've given you this much detail. I, I can complete if you want me to. Sure, go ahead. I want to know. Alright, so in a very serious face, Click Clack examines the group and. He briefly tells them that he was in captivity, you know. Well, I guess I have to do it in voice, damn it. Yeah, you do. <clears throat> <laughs> I was in captivity! <laughs> oh, yeah! And, and I was in a cave, and I was next to this guy, and all he did was do girls all day! Oh, yeah! Get some! <laughs> I he love was like, you didn't hear, girl! I'm gonna make you make babies! <laughs> <laughs> I just have to watch, you know what I'm saying? That's all I did. <laughs> now he's turning into Cheech Marin. <laughs> that's that's exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> it's a mix between Ro Macho Man and, and uh, Cheech Marin. That's what happens when you're in captivity, man. <laughs> oh, you! <laughs> so is this all happening like after the night shift stuff, or is this still while people are sleeping? No, as, as you guys are kind of doing the, uh, as you're getting camp ready. And then, like, Click Clack kind of, like, tilts his head all bird-like and, like, looks at everybody to make sure the message got across correctly. He's like, okay. Nods with, like, satisfaction and kind of goes back to his corner. Hey. <laughs> Eldith jumps in. Actually, no. A stool poofs out a cloud and uh, says to you, so you were in captivity before? Yes. Where? You ever heard of a mind flare? And at that you see you see him tremble and you see Eldith's eyes like flare up. And she like surprised. So my face gets really serious, and I look at both of them, and I say, "How do you think I learned how to talk to people like this?" Eldith says, "How did you escape?" I'm very loyal. Loyal. Yes, very loyal. And so then I tell them the story about how there was a drow invasion. It wasn't my first time with the drow, and I was a slave, but I moved in to save the elder brain. And my race, the Kinku, are naturally limited by three curses uh, an, inability, an inability to talk, an inability to fly, and an inability to have creative thought. In exchange for saving the Elder Brain and the community, I was granted the ability to do all three through psionics. Here I am. One thing, though, everything has a hitch. I, if I make it out, one day they will come for me and they will want the knowledge I have gathered. Stool says, aren't you scared? I've never seen the light of day. I've never been in anything other than a cage. I don't know what daylight looks like or anything like that. This is all I've ever known. And they're the closest thing to family I've ever had. I'm aware that not all mind flares are the same, 
uh, the particular tribe, if you will, that I came from values knowledge more than they <laughs> value brains, as it were. <laughs> so I was able to strike a deal with them. If we were to meet other mind flayers, we might not be that lucky. Eldith says that uh, she's never heard or seen a kind mind flayer. It she kind of, was she more kind of, of a perchance uh, thing. Eye. It was a situational kindness at best. I was their slave, and they had every intention of eating my brain, but what good's a brain that has better uses, such as things my race are good at, like mimicry. If anybody was to do anything bad, I could immediately, instantly, with their voice, show that they had been plotting against the hive. Quite the valuable tool if you think about it. Roll persuasion with advantage. She seems to accept that answer. <clears throat> this is all talking going on with the mind because of the stool, right? I mean, that you're doing that. Right. Anyway, so. Yeah, yes. that's why my voice isn't crazy because we're yeah. actually talking through the mind. <laughs> uh. These powers, are they just, like, yours alone, or are they being channeled to you? Well, everything has a range, and we are far out of the range of the Elder Brain. Uh, I have no idea how far I was when I was captured by those drow, but I can tell you that far enough that there is no contact. The only contact I have mentally with anything is with our beautiful shroom friend, looking at you, buddy. And my my little rat friend, and I introduced everybody. As uh, as he says this, you see a little tiny rat come up, and he's kind of got a small glow to the top of his head, and looks like a normal rat except for you see its brain. Interesting. <clears throat> yeah, a lot. So you say you have a connection with this mouse. How did you hide this in the... How did you protect him from the drought on the cave? They know what he is, but separated from other mice, he's just as good as another mouse. And the Furzies stopped any kind of tele telepathy that we could produce magically from happening. So all we had was our little spore friend. Um, so right now he's useful, but he's a lot stronger with a group of his kind. In a fight, he wouldn't be much use. So, the flying you were doing before, it's just magic? Kind of. I don't know how to explain it, really. It's a little bit different than magic, per se. I'm not casting spells. I don't need to say anything, which is very beneficial given my circumstance, as you might imagine. And other than that, really, it's all my mind. Oh. As I see it, flying is an escape. There's no reason for you to go back to them if they can't catch you. Well put. Okay. Let me know if you need an escape letter. I know plenty of our air corka. I fear that I envy your kind and your natural ability to fly, but maybe even that prejudice could escape me one day. So you guys kind of stop or start settling down. The spores kind of fade, and you notice that you can't really communicate uh, as a group anymore. Uh, so everybody starts to kind of wind down and take a much-needed rest. Um, through the, what, as far as you can tell, the night um, seems to be, for the most part, quiet. Uh, not that it's been loud or anything while you were going, um, several of you do have some bad dreams, uh, fear of spiders and drow chasing you. Um, 
but through each watch, you don't see anything or hear anything uh, that concerns you so much. So, I guess you all wake up and ready to go for day two. Round two, fight. Um, are you keeping the same travel uh, pace and uh, order? Yeah, I'm good. Sounds good to me. All right. All right, Unless so you want someone else in the back, since we lost someone in the back last time. Actually, <laughs> I'll, I'll say, go in the, the back this time. time. <laughs> Who's wanting to be in the back? Well, I don't know. Uh, Tednik, do you want to, since I had the light to lead us? Nope, I'm up front. I got dark vision. I can stay in the back. Oh, yeah, people in the back. <laughs> no, remember the last cat that was in the back. The cats <laughs> are always in the back, apparently. Give it, brother. All right. And we'll just continue. Uh, hopefully, Melvin will rejoin us here shortly. He said that the storm's really bad and satellite sucks, so. Okay. Um... You guys start off, um, Sarath and Shushar kind of directing you as best as, you, as they can um, in the general direction. Most, most directions, they say, kind of lead that way. Sometimes you have to loop back around at a dead end and whatnot. But um, you start going, um, and let's see. Okay. Um, you go for probably three or four hours or so. Um, I need everybody to roll a perception check. Advantage is advantage. Uh, just straight. Mm, these rolls aren't nice to me. Okay, so Luna and Diane both see that um, kind of a small outcropping uh, looks to be a small, slight tunnel, and they hear seems to be heavy breathing, uh, almost a sobbing sound, um, and kind of scraping. Sounds like a It sounds like a girl crying or scared. Can you guys hear me again? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Woo. Welcome back. Just a minor tornado. The house still intact? Most of it. Okay, good. Yeah, it's been bad here. <clears throat> so you see this outcropping and you hear a, a feminine sob. What are you going to do? I totally wanted to wait. There may be someone else who is trying to escape before us that may need our help. I can't kind of point to the outcropping. I'm gonna use my bag and see if I can have one of them scout for me. Okay. <laughs> so you get another boar. Yeah. Mm. Hey, nice. They're so cute. I'm gonna make How my boring. little boar friend go, uh, my boyfriend. Uh, go, <laughs> go find out if they can see anything before we, we head over there. Um, can happen. let's see. The boar does not have any dark vision, so as he gets out of the light cast by Sal's, uh, a stone, he can't really see much and... Damn boar. 
don't seem to be it's... much of a help. Okay. Or squeal. I don't know. I can't do a big noise of <clears throat> How far away was it, Oku? Um, the outcropping is kind of a uh, winding, narrow tunnel. Uh, um, it's a uh, you can't really tell the distance because it's kind of winding back and forth. But you can hear it uh, sobbing, echoing out from the fr from in there. It seems to be echoing through it. Well, we, it we were told it. <laughs> Uh, Ted Doug, let's lead him this way. Uh, Ted Doug, let's lead him this way! Uh, they say there's something going on. I have my bow ready, just in case, but... Okay. So do I need my axe out? It's up to you guys. I'm, I'm asking Sal this. Oh, okay. I don't know, they said something about sobbing, so unless you want to attack the sadness... <laughs> <laughs> I can't imagine Jeremy. this one of sadness. Jeremy looks over there and smirks. Sarah <laughs> uh, will kind of her rough because he just wants to get out of here, but he'll follow. Yeah, I'll I'll have my my great axe in my hand. Okay, probably a wise decision since you don't know anything in this area. I really don't, other than where to find the best shrooms. <laughs> so it seems. Big shroom. All right, so you guys going to traverse that small tunnel? Um, can I find out if it looks safe, like it won't fall in on us? Yeah. Um, roll uh, investigation. It seems to be uh, solid um, earth. Uh, it does drop down a bit um kind of steeply but not so much that you would injure yourself really as long as you're being careful um but and then it comes back up again and turns off to the right hand side a little uh goes straight and then back around to the left if you guys are continuing on that way i'm assuming you are uh, and as you enter around that last curve, it kind of opens up into a, a, a kind of a cave uh, with a ceiling of about 12 feet high um, and you see a uh, um, platinum haired elf in there uh, by herself. Mm. Mm. Okay. Diane doesn't know how she feels about it. She doesn't she doesn't like elves, especially right now. <laughs> right now, she's a little sketchy on the elves. This oh, elf, racist. this I elf mean, is not we just got a dark elf. By a bunch of elves. I chime in. Wrong skin. <laughs> <laughs> um. Okay. Eldeth walks up to the elf girl that's kind of kneeling down, sobbing, and says, What's wrong, dear? And yes, it is me. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I, 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 don't, I don't know where I am. How do I get out? First off, how'd you get here? I, I, I was looking at a scroll, and, and then I, it was dark. Mm. An inexperienced magic user, I see. I'm, I'm great at magic. Uh, it it seems. Well, dearie, I'm afraid to say you're in the Underdark. What's the Underdark? 
Insert perverted joke here. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, Eldith says, very likely a place that you'd rather not be. I already knew that much. Um, can I find out if this person is telling the truth? Yep. Uh, roll an insight check. I mean, a very open face. Yeah, you have no reason to doubt what she's saying. Okay. Well, get up, like girl. Do you, do you think you can get me out of here? Well, that's what we're trying to do. You're a long way from home, wherever home is. Yes, I'll, I'll, I'll follow you. Just like get up and just like you know, just follow Eldeth like a puppy. And as before, you even start to uh, tag along. She says, "Before all that, what's your name, dear?" Uh, my my name is uh, Elena. Elena, huh? Well, everyone in this party plays the part. What part will you provide? I, I mean, I can cast some spells. The variety. She looks back at the group and says, uh, "Do you all think she's not one of us?" One of us. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> so I, I kind of whisper into uh, Elda's mind and I say I could find out if she's one of us if you're really concerned and you hear back in your mind she says uh, she is not one of the prisoners is what I meant right but can we trust her how many random people just pop out of thin air? Isn't that a little scary to you? Indeed it is. I get the term bird brain, but I think I can use it here and say that this seems a little strange. She kind of grins. Says, I don't agree with your methods, but do what you got to do. All right. So I look at the elf... And um, talking right. to the elf now, I say, they'll believe me, but I need to know I can believe you. Will you allow me to do something to you? It's like, I, I have nothing to hide. Good. Show me how you got here. All right, remember we just uh, sitting in a cottage and uh, re looking at a scroll and then Poof. And then I just uh, have no idea where I'm at. I didn't really write it to my backstory, but... So in, in the memory, you see that it is... It is bright wherever she is. Uh, brighter than you've ever seen it. Um, you see female hands looking at a scroll... Um, little bit of mumbling and then all of a sudden darkness and you can feel it's not your heart pounding but you feel her heart pounding in the memory and it's it quickens and quickens and quickens and like frantically she has no idea where she is or why she's there I look at stool and I kind of nod to him trying to Tell him to spore up. He looks back at you, squiggles down to the ground, and goes... <laughs> Thanks, stool. <laughs> he has a very disgusted look on his face. That's what I've so, been breathing in this entire time. <laughs> I can tell you from um, the momentary memory that I experienced that this one has... 
wound up here on accident. She is no different than us. I will vouch for her. She never meant to come here, and I'm sure she means to get out just as much as the rest of us. What say you? I trust El Cuervo. If he, uh, if he says yes, then uh, it's yes. Over and ask if she can use an axe. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you bring to the party? What is your skill? What did you do when you were up top? By the way, thank you for letting me see that. That's amazing. It's like I've, I've had some training as a wizard. Or, well, mostly self-taught, but training is training. Hmm. So no axe wizard or anything? No, no axes. Maybe occasionally splitting wood, but actually from, probably not. <laughs> from the from the looks of it, she is extremely frail looking. Um, She's actually not that frail. <laughs> well, she lived out in the woods, so. Sh she's not as brawn as uh, Ted Nog. Let's put it that yes. way. Does not look like a warrior. So, wizards, I imagine, have a specialty. What is your specialty? Obviously not teleportation, no offense. <laughs> I'm not bacon. If it uh, were, I'd tell you to get us out of here. I mean, I've had no formal training, but... Um, people don't seem to like it. Don't seem to like it. You're just gonna leave it at that. Does she we'll... still have that scroll? Just curious. Observation. No. Uh, no, no, but uh, what I forgot to mention in uh, in the memory is as the mumbling of words and stuff, you see the scroll kind of disintegrate and feel the heat uh, on her hands. So it's it's no longer there. Just making sure. What well, you guys doing? Let's venture forth. I we have no reason not to trust her. So. Okay. Well, let's keep going. If we're going back to marching order, I'm definitely making sure she's in front of me. Okay. Yeah. I would aim for a middle. I aim for middle of the pack. Okie dokie. I just kind of be lost in thought. Probably uh, uh, beh behind Eldith. Probably. Oh, yeah. uh, else. Okay, that's where I was going to put you. Actually, is between Eldith and uh, Bupidu. I walk past her and glow my eyes at her. Glow your eyes. <laughs> yeah, you feel um, almost a chill as you walk by her. Um, let's see. That's not good. Uh, let's see. All right. Um, you guys still probably have enough food and water for now. Um, I'm assuming you're probably rationing it. So, um, again, you, you keep on trekking on this time with a uh, new companion. Um, you don't really see or meet anything along the way. Are you still traveling at a slow pace? Yeah, that's as pretty safe to assume. Be a good idea to stay slow. Okay. Um, so, the advantages of <clears throat> moving at a slower pace is that you can forage uh, more readily and easily. Uh, and you can also stealth as you're moving. Um, the disadvantage, obviously, is it's going to take you about twice as long to get wherever you're wanting to go. So keep that in mind. And part of the problem is we have the light, so it's kind of hard to really stealth unless like, you're staying outside of the light. Yep. But if you guys are still moving at... Uh, if you guys... Keep an eye out for traps and, and ambushes and stuff like that along the way, too. Yep. Um, well, for the second day, you guys walk as far as you can. Um, you don't see or meet anything 
no out of the ordinary from what you've seen so far. Everything looks about the same. Um, so you can't even tell if you're going in the right direction or if you're lost, but Sarah and Shushar assure you that you're going the right way. Um, get through that day and set up camp again. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and say nothing happens that evening either. Um, is there anything you wanted to do in that time while you're while you're walking and going? Um, I have a thing in my um, inventories on a long walk. I don't, know. I don't remember if I tuned to it or. Not. What is it? The wand of the war mage. Uh, yes, you would have attuned okay. to it by now. Just checking, I don't remember. All right. <laughs> okay. That's a level one spell, right? Yeah, it's also can be cast as a ritual, so it doesn't ah. need to be prepared. Gotcha. Okay. It just takes ten minutes if you do it that way. Okay. Um, does anybody else want to do anything? Uh, um, can I still or, uh, start learning Dwarvish? Yep, if you want to try that again. Uh, again with advantage. Okay. I want to join. I'll just be keeping an air on because I've never actually heard Dwarvish. Oh, don't listen to me. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and Eldis sits there and is like, I told you already. Go to Gontel Grimm. They have the best trainers, the best teachers. You can't learn Dwarvish from a human. Well, I'm nowhere near there right now. I try to sit this back in Dwarvish, so I, I probably s sound really stupid. But... And as you're saying it, she kind of puts her arm, her hands up to her ears and just says, Stop! In common, please. <laughs> I say no. <laughs> in, in Dwarvish. That you say clearly in Dwarvish. <laughs> <laughs> I've been practicing that one. I've been practicing that one. Anybody else want to do anything? Are we about to take another long rest? Yep. I would make new berries. Okay. Can I check back in with my weird rock? Well, this would be a different rock. Would it? I well, thought I'd put it on the thing, and it lasts for a certain amount of time. Oh, I see. Okay, I got gotcha. you. Um, yeah, I want to see if we're being followed, is what I'm saying. Gotcha. Okay. Um, you do, you don't really see anything. You do hear what seems to be footsteps. Uh, and you do hear some, some talking. Um, what languages do you know again? Not drow. Well, it would be elvish, but. Yeah, I would know that. Hold on one second. Oh, where language is that? Uh, proficiency is on the left-hand side, I think. At the bottom of your main page. Common and Orion. Okay. So, yeah. Whatever they're saying, you cannot understand. Uh, and it is in low, very low whispered sounds that are kind of echoing along the cave. Are they stealthy footsteps, or are they just reckless abandon? They're very quiet. Would I recognize the sound at all? Yep. Would I be able to identify what I think is making that sound? Yep, probably. You've heard it many times. Okay. All right, well, I tell the group... Um, Oh yeah, I think we're being followed. <laughs> Not sure, but I think it's Drow. Wait, this after we've rested, or it really doesn't this, matter. This is as you're 
um, about to. As you're setting up camp, essentially. So, um, quick question. So, what would we need to make traps? Is that something that you would have to have a kit for, or...? Um, depends. What kind of traps are you thinking? Something to make us aware if somebody sneaks up on us, or, you know, I guess I, maybe... I have the alarm spell, that's all I'm saying. I'll set, I'll set that up each time we rest. That's as a kind of a given. Do you want to link that so that the essentially you're telling the party what that can do? Yep. So basically I can do it whatever direction we think is most likely to uh, be a risk, which I guess in this case would probably be behind us once y'all tell me that. Yep, so I would tell you to probably put it behind us. So, are you wanting this to make an audible sound or mental? Uh, I would probably say I'm not really interested in actually speaking up, so I'd probably make it just audible. Okay. Alrighty. All right. Well, I'm any good any of us would be anyone in our party would be designated to not set it off. Right. Anybody else want to do anything? Nothing special here. Okay. No. Um, same. Um, uh, watches. Yeah, I'm good at going first. Luna, you were with him. Yep. Yeah. All right. Um, Where are the spell slots at? Are they under spells? Uh, okay, yeah, yes, that's yes. Um, Ted, now can you roll perception disadvantage? Come on, good rolls. <laughs> It's okay. I, had, no, I was just curious. Dice roll was the natural twenty. Everything else has been downhill from there. That's okay. You, it, no big deal. It's not not uh, not going to hurt anything. All right. Um, so the rest of the night goes by. Uh, nothing seems to to trigger the alarm. Um, you guys go through your rotations, and everybody gets back up and munches on some more. Mushrooms. Uh, Luna pops in another berry, I'm assuming. Yep. Um, she does not seem to have a taste for rot. Um, I assume you guys start heading off again? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Um, you keep on going. You see that the, the, <laughs> the way kind of opens up for a long, long time. Um, and Sarath kind of leads you along the side of a wall for a while. Um, and then it drops down into a very shallow uh, kind of a cave with lots of stalagma and stalactites. It's almost like you're walking through uh, kind of a, a mouth of something huge. Um, think of the war space worm from Star Wars. So you're kind of walking through this, weaving your way in and out of the, these giant stalactites and stalagmites. Um, kind of keep on going and you walk back up. <clears throat> you come out and you're faced with a very, very steep um, gorge. Um, and as you kind of look out, the, the walkway that you're on is probably, I would say, 
10 to 15. You cut out, you said there? 10 to 15, that's all we heard. It's 10 to 15 feet wide in most of those areas. I thought I lost signal there for a second. Um, and then you see a slight, uh, well, a pretty, pretty dramatic drop off. Um, and as you start seeing this, you can, you start feeling the ground shake. And, and the area that you were just in, you see rocks and debris just start falling. And one of the stalagmites, or whatever the one hanging, falls down and blocks off the area where you were just at. <clears throat> no going back then, huh? Yep. Um, let's see. I knew that was going to happen eventually. <laughs> well, guys, it's that time again. I'll lay one way down. He chuckles to himself. <laughs> <laughs> that was a uh, Sarah telling everyone so <clears throat> do you want to uh, it, it is a very very steep um, descent does anybody want to check it out or you want to have any ideas can we see the bottom you cannot see the bottom maybe we should get the rope out get the, I say, get can the I rope out can I test whether I can use uh, mold earth to create little uh, like hand and foot holds? You could. Yep. That's just a cantrip, right? Yep. 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 You could do that if you wanted. Elemental evil. Um, um, now, is, when you say steep, is this something we're climbing down, or we're going to walk down it but very carefully type thing? It's it's going to probably be a mixture of both. It's um, essentially what it is is a gorge that you're having to go down. Um, as you start climbing down uh, where the footholds that, uh, that Elena is making for you, um, it, you're starting to get tired just coming down, and you've already come down probably. I'm assuming most of you, you are... are doing this, is that correct? Oh, I'm going down. Yeah, okay. I'm on me. Um, <sighs> so you've, you've probably come 80 feet or so, uh, and you still don't see the bottom. What I will say you do see is occasionally you'll see kind of a pinkish cloud, uh, or maybe a, uh, not a cloud, more of a mist coming in and out of the rocks and kind of uh, both where you're at and farther down, but not enough to illuminate a whole lot of anything. Is it like okay, hold on. Is there any like outcroppings I can see out in the distance, like uh, like the stalagmite or that's hanging over, or? Um, <sighs> not really. This is, you can't see the ceiling and you can't see the floor at the moment. <clears throat> Padre, uh, what about this uh, light rock? Do you want to throw it down? Can there? I... What about this uh, light rock? Do you want to throw it down? That's what I was going to do, only I was going to cast daylight on it instead of just light. I'll go ahead and hand it to but you. I want to start with just light. But... Your call. Your call. So you you casting daylight on we'll, it? We'll start. We'll start with we'll start with light, because that's okay. free basically. <laughs> okay. And throw it over the edge. Okay. So you take the rock and cast light on it, and you see a little pebble just falling down, falling down, falling down, falling down. And because it is so dark, you see it go for probably two hundred feet. Mm -hmm. And then it seems to go into darkness. <clears throat> so we got a long way to go. I got an idea. 
I can uh, do my little psychic thing on the rock, and you can throw another one down. Make sure you put light on it, though, and I can tell you what's down. Also, um, how is it getting narrower, or is it still about the same distance across? No, it's very wide. It, um, you probably think it's about as wide as it, as it is deep. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah, I'm up for that idea with the if you're gonna put the psychic thing on it. Sure, it'll take ten minutes though. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are up for a break. <laughs> Let's see if we can work to maybe a flat spot first. Sounds good. All right, um, everybody, give me a athletics check. Dead nugs got this. <laughs> Natural one. Elena is surprisingly good at this. I just can't roll for shit today. <laughs> Let's see. That was and everybody no. except for Luke. Yeah, oh. roll twenty blew up. I'm getting back in, give me a second. Oh, okay. I won't forget to fly if something happens, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Athletics. Unfortunately, I was I want to do a floating disc, but Athletics. it can't hover. It can't hover in midair. It only hovers a few feet above the ground. Oh shit! Okay. Oh, minus one, man. So you start to lose your grip. Um, roll a dex check. Dex Saving save. throw. Yep. <laughs> you start to lose your grip, and as you start to slip, um, you immediately grab onto one of the, the handholds that Elena has created, um, and don't fall any farther. <clears throat> well, um, brother, that was close. But wh where you do land, you see that there is a small ledge area that looks like you might be able to walk for a little while kind of uh, about 10 feet from where you're at right now can I make my way down there yep do I need to do anything to do that or just kind of walk on down there no it's it's close enough to where I'm you probably do it I'm gonna go ahead and grab one of those pebbles and start focusing on it since that's gonna take a bit okay You gonna tell anybody else where you're at? I'm below you. Since you only have one rock that was thrown away, and everything's in pitch darkness now. How oh. far down is it? Because I can see like 60 feet. Yeah, you can't see the bottom. No, no, no. But like you said, for me, I'm gonna oh, hold the rock. I, I, I got gotcha. have somebody. Yeah, I got gotcha. have somebody. I've I've got a hammer I, that I took from the thing. I can chip a rock off the wall, couldn't I, if I have to? Yeah, and I mean, there's plenty of loose ones around too. So. My idea was is that I would hold the rock for 10 minutes, and at the end of that, I'd get somebody to cast light on it. Okay. Um, and, yes, that was my uh, bad. The rest okay. of you can't see him. Uh, he's probably 20 feet away um, below you guys, most of you. Um, he seems to be standing on kind of an outcropping ledge area in the gorge. Probably big enough for for most of you, so that you can actually start walking for a little while. Uh, the hold on to someone's shoulder as we go down. <laughs> I can't see. <laughs> Who's gonna help him down? I'll help him down. Okay. Who's so you're just gonna guy's yeah, gonna just sit there for ten minutes while he focuses on a rock. I'm gonna say how so is the ledge big enough for everyone to get on it? Yes, it, okay, it seems to be long enough to to walk for a while. It's kind of at a gradual slope, kind of like uh, uh, the donkey trails in the Grand Canyon. Is it like a path that keeps going down? Yeah. 
Oh yeah, brother, this rock's really interesting. Okay, I'm gonna go down as well. Okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go too. I'll kind of, uh, yeah, I'll go down on the ledge. I'll kind of, I'm assuming, have you relayed what your plan was to us? I'm gonna hold this rock, and then you're gonna put a light on it, and then we're gonna throw it down there. I'm gonna tell you what's down there. I was gonna say, if you're gonna throw it, uh, try to throw it over in the direction where the path is going to. The little trail. Or okay, young like lady. Okay, so you uh, focus on your rock, and you guys kind of start walking uh, as Click Clack is doing this. Um, it's been about ten minutes now, so do you want to toss it, and if so, where? All right. So I I'm going to actually toss it just down because I feel like that's where we're heading. Okay. okay. So I'm going to pull back Sorry. and toss it. Go ahead. Is uh, Melvin casting light on it first? Yeah. Just or so. Stay lighter. <laughs> sure. Stay lighter. Yeah, I guess. Just light. Just light? Okay. Uh, um, so you guys have walked probably another 100 feet down or so. Uh, this seems to be a lot easier going like this than having to climb down, obviously. Um, so you toss it down, and you're, you're about 200 feet down now. Um, so you're about where you saw it first, um, kind of dissipating, and you toss this one down, and you see the light go, and it goes, and you lose sight of it again. However, in Click Clack's mind, he's still focusing on it. He sees it plummeting, 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 keeps on going. And then it hits the bottom. He estimates from the length of time that it, it took to fall that it's probably about 600 feet deep. You guys are about a third of the way down now. Um, at the bottom, he's not seeing much. Wait, no. He sees that there's... Looks like... Really weird-looking dwarf walking up to the stone, picks it up gleefully, and starts dancing around and walking off. <laughs> Interesting. Someone likes shiny rocks. What you doing? So, I mean, you can keep focusing on it, or you can tell us. Yeah, I can keep focusing on it, but I mean... You know, we gotta do stuff too. So, we're gonna let him walk and see where he goes. And I guess we're gonna try and make our way down if you guys wanna do that. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah, I'm gonna keep going. Okay. Um, takes you quite a while to get down there. Um, by the end, your muscles uh, are extremely sore. That path does not go on for all that much longer than where you were. Um, so, you do have to continue to kind of climb down. Um, by the end, you are all ready for a rest, uh, because when you get down there, you see there is a mostly bear. You do see a small stream kind of meandering through it, <clears throat> uh, um, and it's kind of uh, football-shaped, but you do see the two rocks that have light cast on them kind of being thrown around, almost juggled. And down there you see a dwarf with dark gray skin. He's wearing a bright green shirt or vest, light blue pants, and a bright red shirt. Uh, and he walks up to you and says, Who are you? And Gaman? I'm Ted Nug. He's, <laughs> does, he, does says, like he's, he says this in Dwarvish. No, he does not look like. No, Bukito. he does not look. Okay. So, and this is enough for you for you to make out Ted Nug in Dwarvish. Nice.
and you said you that you're Ted Nug. Yep, I'm Ted oh. Nug. Yeah, he has also got a large floppy hat, kind of like a, um, uh, looks like a crumpled uh, tin can with a small brim on it, and it kind of flops over like a like a hobo's hat. It's um, a crumpled top hat with the the top hanging off. Yes, yes, like that. Um, you also notice as he kind of gets closer in his beard, he has some phosphorescent, looks like fungus particles in it, uh, um, as well as it's kind of rubbed all haphazardly around his clothing. And uh, again, in dwarvish, he says. What brings you here? Oh, just heading out. Bad luck. Yeah, roll intelligence check, Tedna. To see if you understand that. Can, can you just say, You want to see the wizard? No way, no how! <laughs> <laughs> That's well. uh, you know enough to, to understand that. Okay. They say head out of this tunnel. Where where are you going? Out of this tunnel. There's this cave. There's, there's no tunnel here. The only way is out. I mean up. You've gotta be shitting me. I assume Sarah didn't understand anything he's saying. Nope, Sarah doesn't understand. Insight check. Oh, no. He sees the way that you're questioning you, him. He says, Why would I lie to you? I have no reason. I'm here by myself. So, what's uh, Elda's opinion on this? She, no. she knows that this is a, it's a Dwargar. Uh, she knows that Usually they're very reserved, very plain. They don't like color. Something is off about him. Um, he he kind of catches her glance as well and says, What's wrong with you, Red? To which she says, No, dear. I, th I think it's what's wrong with you. And this kind of pisses him off. He says, nothing's wrong with me. I was here first. I found these glowing rocks. You all need to be leaving. You all need to be leaving. I dispel the color, the light on the rocks. And you hear him kind of scream out. Why? Why do you take the light? I'll put it back. Be a little more civilized. I tell him that in Dwarvish. It is you not being civilized. I'm being, I'm being quite civil. You are the ones that came here. Um. Ted knows just gonna start looking around. Looking for another direction in the cave to go. Uh, what's that little guy going on about? I can't understand a word. Yeah, he's talking in Dwarvish, so most of the others cannot understand what he's saying. If anybody wants to elaborate. Can we tell if he's acting crazy, though? <laughs> Even though we don't know his language? Um, well, me sort of do. Yeah, he... Eldith kind of relays that uh, yeah, he, guess, yeah. he's acting weird. Let's just keep going then. That's not a worry about him. Okay. Um, you guys are, like I said, extremely tired. Yeah, I'm going to say, Elena's just going to kind of sit on the ground, catch your breath after all that. Um, Ted Nug, you said you were walking around? Oh, yeah. Um, roll and then perception, yeah, perception check with disadvantage. Oh, man. 
it was a good first roll. <laughs> <laughs> so you do walk around, um, understanding what little of dwarvish you know. You can see that it does seem like the only way out of this area is indeed up. Well, I try to say in Dwarvish. Well, that sucks. Uh, uh, seems you're right. Mind if we rest for a while? Rest? Rest? It, it's just the day. I, I have mushrooms to find. You can't stay here. Don't worry. We won't touch your mushrooms or rocks. Does he seem like he's like under a spell or something? Can we do an arcana check? Um, uh, you can try that, yeah. Um, you don't know much about Dwargar and can't really tell if that's how he normally acts or if he's bewitched or, or what's really going on. Since I only know half of what he's saying, mm -hmm. um, Diane is kind of annoyed Okay. Uh, because she's really tired. So she's just going to sit down and put her hands on her face and just kind of like shake her head. Okay. Um, as you do that, Stool's going to come up to you and wiggle up and kind of snuggles up against you and he goes, Is he going to fart on me? <laughs> And 30 feet around you, you see this poof of spore. Great! I love it! <laughs> he says, What's wrong? Uh, uh, aw, stool. She gives him a little pat and she just says that she's tired and having to listen to this guy is making her head hurt. I guess someone had to carry stool down, didn't they? Yep. Sarah was likely <laughs> carrying him on his back. <clears throat> um, Stool says, I don't understand him either. Maybe we can listen this way. That sounds like a good idea, Stool. She just, like, puts her arm around him, and they just kind of chill. Has anyone thought to uh, ask him uh, any, as you know, any easier ways up? You can ask him. We can all talk now. Yeah. He would be out of knowledge of that because he still was spoken in Dorvish that this is the wrong way. So that's why Sarah hasn't said anything yet either. Mm. All right. So I'm gonna ask. I cast a spell, Mary. Right, so gonna... How did you get down here? You you're casting dispel magic. Or what's going on? Dispel magic, or how did I get down here? Yeah, he linked it. Okay. Okay. Um, the spell goes off. He feels a tingle, and he says, What are you doing? Says or thinks? He says it in Dwarvish. But the rest of you that are near Stool can but understand. The rest Just double checking something. I cast light on three little stones down there and hand them back to him. He seems to be elated. He says, uh. Ah. You wouldn't have an, any mushrooms by chance, would you? And then he sees Stool. He says, 
Oh, I see you got a big mushroom. Stand down, little man. Like I guess say, do we still have some of the barrel stalks? I don't. I, my character doesn't know anything about them, but you know. All right, I guess I guess I'll there to eat some, maybe. So we're pretty low on them at this point. Yeah, you guys are probably running quite low. Well, do you have a press the, the digitation? Hand. Yeah. Stool. Maybe a, <laughs> maybe a good berry could be disguised. But if y'all want to ask me... What is all this talking in my head? Get out of there! Oh my goodness. <laughs> How can we help you, friend? You want mushrooms? I could help you forage for some. Yes, uh, I uh, mushrooms are my life. They're my life too, man. 420 blaze it. <laughs> All right, well, let's go look for some mushrooms then. Okay. Um, roll a investigation check. And are you using third mind? Third eye, yeah. Yeah, that one. Unless it got dispelled when he did dispel magic. Each has a creature, so they shouldn't. Yeah. Okay. Um, you're able to find a couple small uh, um, Trilomac mushrooms. Uh, they're probably 40 feet away from the, where the group is now. Um, it's actually a, quite a large um, mushroom, and this is one that they often use for making parchment. Um, some clothing is made out of it. Um, seeing as that raw materials and things like that are very low, um, low quality or quantities here in the Underdark, these are highly valued, and uh, he it's quite um, elating for him to find these. Awesome. So using my powers to talk to his mind, because I don't have to do any ability, just one-on-one. -on -one. Mm -hmm. I want to ask him um, if he knows somewhere where we could trade and maybe like a town nearby or something like that. Because obviously just having mushrooms with no one to trade them with would be kind of pointless. <clears throat> he says, uh, Why? What is this head talk? Um, you yeah. want to hear my real voice? <laughs> he, he says, what, do, you, do, you, do you not think that I, I like this? Uh, why, why are you always judging me? My bad, man. I'm just a humble little happy bird that's black. Like myself. <laughs> <laughs> the happy emo bird. <laughs> yeah. Hard X core to the core. X core. Does Turvy give a nod to that? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't actually hear, you know, uh, click, but he knows. He feels he the senses. <laughs> <laughs> the darkness. <laughs> the, the room is just a little darker over there than the rest of it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so. Um, what are you guys wanting to do? What? Oh, you, you are asking... Uh, yeah, I'm looking where, for a where, trader or like some, some form of civilization at this point. Homeboy wouldn't want to have something if he couldn't get something for it in my mind. Mm. Like, why would you have gold if you couldn't buy anything? It's the concept. Right. Um, he, he does say that there are... Um, Traders that come by occasionally, traveling traders. Um, the nearest town um, is still several days away. Hmm. It's several days away. Can he point us in the right direction? Or take us there? He says... Uh, he says... I already told you, the only way out is up. And he points up, 
Not the way that you guys came down, but the other wall. Can uh, Elena or Relay through uh, Eldeth actually can ask like you know how how do they you know if the traders come through here if I hear that like how do they get up and down? You probably wouldn't hear this. That uh, they're okay. They're a good forty feet, fifty feet away from the rest of the group. They're mind talking, anyways. Yeah, right. Yep. Um, one is. Yeah, you just probably hear some random guy's voice <laughs> talking to himself. Endorphishly, get to. Yeah. All right. Well, um, I guess now I know what we need to do. So, I ask him if he wants to come with us out. He says, no, no, I've got pl more than enough to do here. All right. Well, it was nice to meet you. What's your name? My name is Delane Erath. What is yours? Click, clack. Mm. Hmm. It's the sound of my chains. It's Are you mocking? Can... Are you no. mocking me? No. I, I feel like you're mocking me. Nope. I, I hate when people are mocking me. No. Okay. I'm not mocking you. I'm a king poo. Do you know what that is? No clue. It's it's hard to explain, but I can't talk normally. That's why I'm in your head, because I have a terrible voice. It's a long story. Do you want to hear it? No. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Because I don't want to do it. Thank you. Uh, I appreciate can I, it. Can I look closer along the wall? Because uh, the wall that we he keeps pointing to to go up. Sure. Uh, do we still have the light spell in the area? Uh, he took the stones with him, so probably uh, disadvantage not. For an, I'll just look disadvantage. I'll cast another one. So I'm going to go okay. back to the group and relay what I've learned so that we know that we can go out the other way. Okay. Just trying to see if there's any sort of path or something like that. It's a long way up. So it is. It's too bad we don't have like a bird guy who could fly or anything. I say in your head. I, <clears throat> I mean, if you give me a light, I can go anywhere. I'm not going to fly in the dark. Oh, I have a candle. He's, he's still quite tired from walking or right. climbing all the way down, too. Which yeah, would be silly. his arms and legs. His wings are fine. <laughs> we should rest then, yeah. Uh, if anyone's actually trying to convey where we're going, I mean, would Sarah have already mentioned the going back up, or does he, since he knows his way? What was that? Would Sarah, you know, because he's Mr. Guide Man, would, uh, so no one's really asked anyone where we're going down here yet, to where he could understand it, but uh, would he be saying up or a different direction he he agrees that's probably the best way okay any other ways would he says would uh take you weeks out i say just to get farms two charts generally in agreement as well i guess and as you guys are talking amongst yourselves uh delane taking his glowing stones, kind of juggling them, continues walking off the tort, uh, following the, the stream. He's finally leaving to where we can rest. <laughs> He's satisfied enough. Well, for an hour at least. <laughs> what are you guys doing? Well, I guess we're going to rest and find a way up. Okay. Uh, um, do, we need, do you think we need a short rest or a long rest? Uh, it would be a long rest. Nick, after yes. um, after like the second or third watch, if my character is awake, can I can I go look at what the stone's doing, kind of deal? See if he's, you know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. Um, Once he gets a ways off, just to make sure you're, he's not you're, like ratting us out. Right. You've got the second watch, right? Yeah, I'll do it at the end of that, right before I go. Okay. Um, I, yeah, I don't technically need a watch, but I also only need uh, four hours rest uh, or trance. Yep. Okay. 
Um, so are you guys going to go ahead and set up a, another camp and stay here at the bottom of the gorge for tonight? Or to rest, at least? Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, Who's as safe as anywhere? Uh, I don't know. I guess hmm, there's not really a good place to put the alarm spell, is there? No, I'm just around you guys. I guess I can just put it, yeah, put it around the camp in general, 20-foot cube. Okay. With us not triggering it. Alrighty. So, uh, first watch goes by, nothing happens. Um, second watch goes by, nothing happens, and Click Clack wants to uh, inspect in on his stones. Is that right? That is correct. Uh, focusing in on that stone. The one that you left in the cave, right? Yeah, the one that like I threw down that he picked up. Oh, that was the one that you were... Okay. Alright. So not, not the one that you left in the cave that you saw or heard footsteps before. Nope. Okay, um, gotcha. The, the one that he's picked up, uh, whatever the guy's name was, I forgot. Delane? Yeah. Okay. Um, so you see him, um, he seems to have set up camp as well, um, right along the wall, water's edge, uh, it seems to be a good ways down. Okay, cool, cool. That's what I needed. Okay. What's his name again? Um, I was just chewing as you're saying, I was curious. What was that? What was his name again? You broke up there, sorry. What was his name again? Uh, it's Delane Erath. E-R-A-T-H. Okay. I guessed right. Um, also, I need... Go ahead. Does, does anyone actually have climbing gear? Probably not. Guessing not. We have but. ropes and stuff, but that's about it. I got a uh, hammer and some spikes. Yeah, okay. Yeah, pythons. Or, well, they, spe oh, they specifically call them spikes, didn't they? Does this work as pythons? Very likely, yeah. Um, I need everybody to roll a wisdom check. Oh, my. Wisdom check. We good. Man, these rolls are just absolutely awful things. Okay. As you wake up, half of you slept soundly. Do you want saves or checks? Because. Uh, uh, just keep it at what you got there. That's fine. Okay. <clears throat> so Melvin, Diane, and Ted Nog slept very fitfully. Dreams of just terrible things. Melvin dreamt of back at Fendover seeing beasts tearing through the town. Uh, dark forms just looming over uh, Keelan and Carp just tearing them apart. Uh, Diane reliving her troop being massacred in front of her eyes. Tednug being imprisoned again and just beaten endlessly with no rest. And as you wake up, I need you all to roll on C. One second. Oops. Uh. All right. In your macros you should see something called madness table uh, 
I want you to click it and um, click the test macro or whatever, or show on bar or whatever it is. And when in, when you click it, it's going to show short-term madness. You all three are going to have uh, one level of madness, so mark that on your... Um, mark I don't see where your... to do that, Nick. Okay. Do you, on the macros list next to the cog wheel? It's not showing for me. I know it's not for you. Okay. Should be showing on um, Bob Scott's and Wits. Okay, because he said all of you. Hold on. Um, I meant I meant those three. Sorry. I just I see short term madness. Okay. Long term and indefinite. <laughs> okay, so click on the short term, mm -hmm. and hit OK or whatever. Okay. It says public or private. Private. Oh, not with that dog. Well, my bad. That's okay. You'll see me laughing in a corner to myself. <laughs> Taking fun, Liv, when I mess with the guard by jumping. Elena's going to make sure to shy away from that. Okay, so Ted Nug, it's your option. Do you want to scream or laugh or weep? I want to laugh to myself in the corner. For okay. at least four minutes now. Like, fuck this two minute thing. We're doing four minutes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The first two is from madness, the second two is because it's funny. <laughs> so. As you uh, as you wake up through the dreams, you wake up while you're being beaten, and all of a sudden you just you f out of crazed lunacy, you just start laughing to yourself, and it's echoing through the cavern louder and louder for uh, for about four minutes or so. Um, the other two, Diane and Melvin, you saw what you rolled, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, don't have to tell everybody what your what happened. It's up to you. Okay. Um, but you see how how long each of these lasts, right? So yeah, um, unless I tell you guys otherwise, try not to roll public. Just um, make yes, my bad. More fun. No, it's fine. Here's what about I forgot that it was even anyways. able to be. I think we would have noticed yours anyways. Yeah. <laughs> um, you do see Melvin kind of... You do twitch, see Melvin kind of twitching around and... Where do uh, I see how long it lasts? What's that? Where do I see how long it lasts? At the top where it says short-term madness and it says last blank minutes. I don't see lasts, however long. In the purple on the chat thing, it says short term madness, and right below it. Hold on. Okay, I see it. Got see it? it? Okay. Uh, but the rest of you guys, yeah, you see Melvin kind of looking all over the place frantically. Um, it's obviously, Melvin goes to Ted and obvious. Diane says, we, we need to get back up top. You heard me. He, but it's hilarious out a bit. down here. Uh, Diane uh, stands up and goes over to Melvin. Okay, what are the rest of you doing? The rest of you are not seeming to be affected in any way. I'm just like trying to analyze what's going on. I want to keep looking to see if there's an easier way up, but I need to climb. I would recommend using climbing gear, using rope and uh, the spikes. I'm gonna go over to Ted Doug, put a claw on him, and. Awkwardly laugh. Like, <laughs> what, what's so funny, Ted Nug? 
I just started <laughs> laughing even harder. He doesn't think, like uh, being left out of the joke. I think this guy's has lost his marbles. <laughs> you hear coming from Sal, but uh, it's not Sal's voice. Hmm. What? Gaslighting us. Just still kind of awkwardly laughing with them, patting him on the back, <laughs> trying to offer them to. <laughs> I'll stay with him for the, the four minutes. Has it been about four minutes yet? Yeah, it's it's probably been yeah, about four minutes. I'm going to go check on Ted Nug. I'm going to be um, really smooth and try to play it off. I just think about the, um, just something happened in the past with my trap that was really funny. Oh, I see. I'm going to go check out Diane to make sure she's okay. <laughs> I'm good. Cool. So what you guys doing? Gonna make the climb up or? Start climbing. Okay. I'll right. uh, use uh, Mold Earth as I need to, but Okay. I think it'll be easier with the ropes still. We still have a bird. Mm -hmm. Well, we're gonna keep. Uh, we're gonna keep a light spell up, and he could still fly up. We or could climb up with do it, a few things. Way. We could. We could get him to place a rope so that we don't have to like do it ourselves. He could like lead. Something uh, like that. Yeah. What's the range of my mold earth? Yeah. What's the range of my mold earth? Sounds like a good plan. I can, yeah, I can reach 30 feet with Old Earth, if possibly, and maybe great spots for him to put the, uh, to help seat the spikes. Could you mold Earth to raise us up? Not significantly, no. In fact, no, not really. I can't actually pick anything up on the Earth. Okay. Yeah, that would be a little bit too good for a cantrip. <laughs> yeah, it's just a cantrip. Um... Yeah, I mean, he'll agree to do anything. Um, I have no idea how this will work, but uh, it's going to be hard to use my hands if I... Uh, actually, I can hold it with my foot. Never mind. I figured it out. <laughs> so he'll carry the, uh, <laughs> the rock with his you got feet. Uh, so he has his hands free. <laughs> oh, yeah, I guess he has. Does he have claw feet, I guess? I didn't even think about that. Yeah, he would still have talent. It's like... I literally was doing it in my head and it was coming out at the same time, so it worked perfectly. But yeah, I'll help them out. I really want me to help out. So what? You want me to tie stuff? You need to tell him. He doesn't know these things. He's not the smartest bird. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm thinking. So I'll go tie off some rope, however long distance it seems that would uh, help them out. Like, give me a, give me you a got tug. A light source? Yeah, if Melvin gives me another rock, I, I don't mm -hmm. know. I meant Melvin, but it's a next Yeah, no problem. Is he giving you a tug and then a nug? <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> give me a, uh, give the the rope a tug whenever I uh, am high enough up. I can't see the bottom. And then he'll go tie it off where it's a good distance if they give him a give that a tug. How long is the rope? Fifty foot. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. You should still be a is light. It's thirty feet bright light or not? Uh, I think it's. I think it's twenty. Oh, I can't remember. I'm looking it up right now. I've got a book. Yeah, it's 20 foot right and uh, 20 foot dim. Okay, that's what I thought it was. So basically, you could see 40 feet with it. Yep. Okay. 40, 40 feet is probably, probably up to the range of this, up to that, maybe a little higher. It's fine for height. So it Do should be relatively easy for you to judge it. Do any checks for the 
roll them or tying it or anything. Thank you, Luna. I know. We're we're gonna wrap up here shortly. <clears throat> So basically do that, rinse and repeat. Um, well, wait, do we have more than one rope? I think you guys might have picked up a few from the uh, armory. I don't know. I think we have like three between us, it said. Then we had okay. how many spikes? I had ten. Ten total. So if we do 50 feet intervals, it's 500 feet that way. But we can always reuse. I guess pull out the ones lower and use them, and then uh, leapfrog them. Yeah, I think Smoke took the other spikes. Uh, actually, he uh, didn't. Have, he didn't take any of the spikes. Actually, he had taken a bag of cob trips, and that was about it. Yeah, I remember that. Anything you need from us there, Nick? Um, no, I'm typing in the background, sorry. Uh, let's see. Uh, in the interest of time, we'll just say it takes you guys a while to get to the top. Um, probably a good majority of the next day to climb all the way back up. Uh, I'm not going to make you do rolls and stuff. Um, but we'll start on there. Uh, so far, you guys are about four days in. Um, is there anything you guys wanted to do that we weren't able to cover in that time? I know we didn't have any fights or anything, but there was a lot of role play and things like that, which I'm, I enjoyed. I hope you guys did. Uh, I'm trying to stretch the role playing muscle a bit. So. And I'm glad to hear people. I'm glad. Yeah, we got a lot of people to get to know each other here, so that's not a bad idea anyway. Yeah. So, um, I know it's not as much action, but I'm really trying to put this, put you guys in the setting and make you want to get the hell out of there. <laughs> Hopefully I'm being the effective. So, what was that? But I won't get the hell out of here. <laughs> Melvin wants to get the hell out of there, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, oh, no, I think I'm getting quite cozy. Stockholm <laughs> Syndrome. <laughs> did you got, did uh, Melvin, Diane, and Ted Nug all add their point of madness on their sheets? Uh, uh, wait. Should. Should be up one. By the way, you'll need to add those on my sheet at some point. My sheet is on my Where is it? I don't see it. Should be on the right hand side. Um, Got it. Falls. Does it count as one? Yes, it'd be one. So does that ever reset? Or maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Rip. <laughs> we all just go crazy. Hell yeah. Uh, what a nice way to go, right? Mm hmm. Um, Bob, it's under, you see your channel Divinity on your right hand side? Divinity on your right hand side. I found it. Okay. So just mark that up one. All right. Uh, did anybody have any questions or comments about tonight? Or anything else? So, I think. Um, Go ahead. I was really just gonna ask, like, is this madness level like? Huh? Is is there like a limit that I need to worry about reaching? Mm, no, not really. Just I'm pretty sure get, you're gonna find out one way or the other. Things will just <laughs> get progressively weirder. Yep. Okay. Not to give too much away, but yes, yes, things okay. will get weirder. I was just wondering if, like, if I hit like ten, does my guy go crazy and just start like cutting up the crew or what? Never Only know. one way to find out. 
And is that going to be a wisdom saving, I guess, for future saving throw or just wisdom straight? Um, if it's different being you know, proficient. Right. Yeah, it probably would be a saving throw, uh, but it may not always be wisdom either. Okay. That just makes a difference of three points for me. <laughs> okay. Yep. Good questions. Anybody else? Already playing Heroes of the Storm. Jeez. Wow. Couldn't even <laughs> wait. Is the next week event? When, when do they switch over? To Tuesdays? But, you know, I'm sorry. That's about Heroes of the Storm. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's funny. I didn't even get to any of the maps. Um, how was the uh, Theater of the Mind play? Did, did that work for you guys? I mean, there was no battles, obviously. Oh, yeah, for this? Yeah, that's, I think it's fine for that. I don't think you need a map for yeah. stuff like that. No, I don't think you need a map for stuff like that. Yeah, it was fine. Okay. And this uh, speaking system works way better than the other one. Yeah, I agree. I didn't hear any robots tonight. No, you didn't. Just one tornado. <laughs> <laughs> yep. All right, All right, well. I'm going to head out. Alrighty, if nobody else has anything, then uh, y'all have a good night. Um, hopefully I'll hear from you all in a couple weeks, and I'll keep you posted about uh, Memorial Day. So. And I'll yeah. let you know details about two weeks from now once I know more. I'm supposedly landing around 345, so hopefully I should be in a hotel by then, but I'll be okay. makeshifting with my work laptop and my phone to make it work. So. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah, I'll be at the uh, for Memorial Day. Actually, I think I'll be at the beach. Um, I might have issue with voice. We'll see what happens. Okay. The oh. Wi-Fi there is terrible, but usually I can just um, share off my phone. Gotcha. Well, I'll I'll keep you guys up to date on that. I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to do.